G'day reefers, I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Thanks for watching Gallery Aquatica TV. Today we're going to talk about nitrate and phosphate. We're going to look at nutrient export systems and we're going to look at why it's important to have a well balanced nutrient input and output in your reef aquarium. And we have the perfect tank to demonstrate this. It's an absolute epic tank. Let's go check it out. So we'll just quickly have a look at the different types of nutrient input inputs that go into your typical reef tank. And the big one is the fish food. And so we have some squares of frozen fish food here that we're going to put into the tank. And of course this fish food is basically made up of protein. And so this is the major source of nutrients going into your reef tank. So similar to the fish food, the other big nutrient input into a system like this is coral food. And so typically coral foods are powders, uh, they can be liquid, phytoplankton, zooplankton, marine snow, but these of course are nutrients that are going into your reef tank. So we've had a quick look at the different nutrients which are going into your reef aquarium. Now what happens if these nutrients aren't removed from the system? They will build up as nitrogenous wastes, typically in the form of nitrate. Now nitrate as well as phosphate in large amounts will actually cause big problems to your tank. You'll have reduced coral growth, you'll have more coral losses and you'll also have a lot of problem algae. So what systems can we employ to reduce the nitrate and phosphate from a reef tank? So now we'll have a look at some of the nutrient export systems and we'll look at the nutrient export systems on this tank specifically and show you how you can maintain a balanced nutrient level. This epic tank number three runs at a very low phosphate and nitrate level. Now how are we able to maintain these low nutrients in such a big system with so much food going into the tank? And the secret is in the filter room. So let's go check out the different types of nutrient export systems that we have operating on this tank, just through here. So the big one, the skimmer. Now the skimmer is a nutrient export system which works by pulling out the precursors for nitrate and phosphate. And you can see it, the nutrients accumulate in the cup and every week we tip out sometimes as much as uh, a couple of litres of pure nutrient waste from the skimmer. But the skimmer doesn't really work on nitrate and phosphate itself. It takes out the precursors, but what can we use to reduce the nitrate and phosphate level? And so this is the big one, the refugium. And as you can see, this is quite a large refugium for this massive tank and we have a very strong LED light which gives us excellent growth in our macroalgae. And so this macroalgae is sucking the nitrate and phosphate straight out of the water. 
so we've had a look at the major nutrient input into the reef system and that's with the fish food but let's just have a look at some of the other things that are nutrient inputs that you might not think about so the next thing which is nutrients it goes into the tank on a regular basis are amino acids So we're in the filter room of this epic tank and we dose our amino acids into the sump. Amino acids are quite an obvious type of nutrient going into the tank, but there's another possible uh, way or system that nutrients can get into your uh, reef tank and that is through your automatic top up water. Now this is why we use reverse osmosis filters as well as deionization filters so that we can ensure that there's no nutrient input from our automatic top up water. Now there are two other forms of nutrient export system that we use on this tank but to show you these we'll have to go back upstairs to the tank. So our next form of nutrient export system that we use on this tank is water changing. So we're going to uh, gravel vac the tank, we're going to remove bacterial silt which is high in nutrients out of the substrate and we're going to dilute the nitrate in the water by adding clean water, new water to replace the water we've removed. So you can see the cloudy water that's coming up through the gravel vac and that's bacterial silt which would otherwise decay in the substrate releasing nitrate and phosphate. So it might seem like an obvious one but water changing is an important form of nutrient export in this system. So we've almost finished our gravel vac and we're just letting the water drain a little bit more. But whilst we do that, we're going to look at the last form of nutrient export that this tank has. And it's a bit of an unusual one. It's a little bit similar to our refugium downstairs. It's actually a macroalgae called Halometer, which is growing really quickly in this tank. And you can see it's almost taking over. So today we're going to remove this Halometer and it's gonna be a bit of a difficult job. So let's have a look. It's such a deep tank, it's hard to reach in. So I'm gonna to need to use some tools for this job. That. So, Halameda is great in that it absorbs waste out of the water and helps with our nutrient export system. But one thing it also does is it also reduces what also uh, uptakes calcium and KH out of the water. So it makes it harder for us to maintain our balance of calcium and KH. So we have to prune it back every now and then. Look at this. That's crazy. So you can see all of these what are dead leaves that have uh, bleached and 
um, they'll release the calcium, they'll dissolve into the water, but they're made up of calcium and KH, but that's some massive amount of halometer back there. So this is one of the main reasons for doing this today is that the halometer was getting to the point that it was overtaking the tank. And so it totally makes sense why we're running such low nutrient levels. But this poor hammer coral was being shaded by the halometer at the back. And you can see it's almost bleached out entirely at the back there. Um, it should be okay. I think we've got it just in time. But this is the problem with halometer in your tank or anything which overtakes. Uh, and that has, yeah, that poor hammer's been shaded. It'll be okay. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it there. It's important that I don't take it all out in one go or else we'll actually have a big shift in the levels of the calcium and the KH. And also, I've run out of space in my barrel. So that's our pruning for the halometer done. And if you have a look in the barrel, that's a massive amount of absorbed nutrients. So this is months worth of fish food that's gone into the tank, that's been excreted by the fish, converted into nitrate, and then absorbed by the halometer, that's huge. So the nutrient export system in this tank is all about the refugium with the ketomorpha and in the tank with the halometer. But there's other systems that we use on other tanks which are also very effective as a source of uh, nutrient export. And these are things such as carbon dosing to promote bacteria which breaks down nitrate in the presence of phosphate as well as absorption medias and these are things such as carbon and GFO. But anyway that's our uh, job for today. Um, we just have to fill the tank back up again and give it a bit of a clean but I uh, hope you've enjoyed this um, episode on nutrient export systems and thank you very much for watching Gallery Aquatica TV. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing. So that's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe as well. We'll be putting out videos every week showing a, a new tank with new products. There's gonna be lots in all the videos. I'm Cam the Fish Guy and keep on reefing.